All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, But those who have believed, migrated, and striven for Allah's cause, it is they who can look forward to Allah's mercy. Allah is most forgiving and merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our Master Prophet Muhammad is Vatari and Messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the Day of Judgment. The immigration of the Prophet peace be upon him from Mecca to Medina represents a great historic event that has changed the course of human history. Actually, we are in a dire need to draw all meanings that contribute to the progress of our society and the building of our civilization. This immigration was a turning point between the truth and falsehood. It was a positive transformation towards the establishment of the Medina state on a solid ground of justice, equality, freedom of belief, preservation of human dignity, peaceful coexistence, social cohesion among citizens of one nation, and the cooperation in the econ economic activity in its different forms. The Prophet peace be upon him established the new state from various components that included building a mosque. The first thing the Prophet did when he arrived in Medina was building a mosque because a man's relation with his Lord is the core of security. The true religiousness is the most important factor for, of building a personality that constructs and develops rather than destructs and demolishes. As much as one deviates from the true path of religion or as much as he misunderstands his religion, his character becomes troubled. Also, the mosque has a social and scholarly message to promote in the society for its common good. Economic building. A strong economy is a key factor in building states, and when it's absent, no state can progress. A strong and stable economy enables any state to fulfill its local and international requirements, as well as providing an honorable life for its citizens. When an economy is weak, poverty and disease spread life become disturbed, crises break out, morals go lost, and crimes increase. In such a situation, it is an opportunity for the enemies to work to bring the state down and push it into an endless mess. Therefore, the Prophet peace be upon him was eager to make Medina a society of an economic power that would enable it to fulfill the needs of its citizens, defend itself, achieve its message of peace, security, and reconstruction of the universe, which is the message of Islam. Thus, the Prophet peace be upon him established a large marketplace in Medina to be the source of legitimate earning and commerce and a place for craftsmen. This marketplace was called al manakha Ata ibn Yasir narrated that when the Messenger of Allah wanted to appoint a place for the marketplace of Medina, he went to the market of Bani, Bani Qaynuqa and said, This is not a market for you. It will always be your market and no duty will be lived on it. The prominent figures among the companions worked in trade and refused to be aided financially by the Ansar. Abdurrahman ibn Auf narrated that when the immigrants reached Medina, Allah's Messenger peace be upon him established the bond, the bond of fraternity between Abdurrahman and Sa'ad ibn Arabiya. Sa'ad said to Abdurrahman, I am the richest of all the Ansar, so I want to divide my property between us. Abdul Rahman said, May Allah bless your family and property for you. Where is the market? The nations that do not own or produce its, their food, clothes, and weapons will not be able to govern their own affairs. It is said that when you are benevolent to someone, you become superior to him. When you abstain from accepting others' help, you become equal to them. And when you are in need for someone, you become, you become a captive to him. The Prophet peace be upon him taught us that the upper hand is better than the lower hand. The upper hand is the hand which gives and the lower hand is the hand that digs. It goes without saying that this applies to nations, institutions, individuals, as no one can deny the importance of money in our life 
and in, in the advancement of individuals and nations and in the development of people's lives. With knowledge and money, people build their own kingdom. No kingdom may be built on ignorance and poverty. The Prophet, peace be upon him, stated the regulations governing these transactions. He called for kindness and tolerance and in buying and selling, saying, May Allah show mercy to a man who adopts a, a kind attitude when he sells, buys, and demands for the repayment of loans. He also called for the truth truthfulness and honesty, saying, The truthful, trustworthy merchant is with the prophets, the truthful, and the martyrs. The prophet also forbade monopoly, saying, Whoever, whoever hoards food for 40 days, he will be acquitted of Allah. Moreover, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to follow the process of selling and buying in order to guide people to what's right. Abu Huraira narrated that once the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, passed by a heap of corn, his thrusts, his hand in that heap and his fingers felt wetness. He said to the owner of that heap, What's this? He replied, O Messenger of Allah, these have been derenched by rainfall. He remarked, Why did you not place this, the drenched part of the heap, over the corn, so that people might see it? He who deceives us is not one of us. After migrating to Medina, the Prophet, peace be upon him, founded a strong state whose foundations are recorded in the Medina Charter. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not only suffice with establishing brotherhood among the migrants and the supporters, but also wanted to highlight a very human concept through the Medina Charter, which is considered the greatest document in the history of mankind ever as it laid down the rights and duties for all the society's members and established the rules of peaceful coexistence among the citizens of the one country on one hand and among human fellows on the other, which is why it is viewed as the greatest human document on existence through ever, on coexistence through ever history. This is proved by the treaty concluded between the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Jews of the Medina, along with others. The Prophet gave those Jews all the rights of Muslims, including security, peace, freedom, and joint defense against the Medina. One of the most important terms of this charter is, the Jews shall, shall stand with Muslims as long as they defend the Medina. The Jews of Bani Auf are one nation with Muslims. For the Jews is their religion, and for Muslims is their religion. The charter, the charter also highlights the freedom of religion, security, and joint defense against any aggression against the Medina. This means that the civilian state in Islam includes Muslims and non-Muslims. They have the same rights and duties of the Muslims, on condition that they should abide by the social regulations that keep all the rights and duties of all members of the society topped by peacefulness, non-aggression, non-break of the terms of social contract that regulates the relation among all mankind. Peaceful coexistence among all human beings is a religious duty and a social necessity imposed by man's, by man's reality. It will never be realized unless all people feel safe that they are the nationals of one country with the same rights and duties as Muslims, without any discrimination based on religion, ethnicity, etc. Allah Most High says, there shall be no compulsion in religion. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his companions applied this principle practically. They did not force anyone to embrace Islam nor did they demolish a church, a synagogue, or any house of worship. On the contrary, places of worship were respected by Muslims, since Islam guarantees the freedom of worship for all mankind, taking into account the fact that nobody will have the ability to change this principle of diversity, as this is against the divine will. Allah the Almighty says, and had your Lord willed, those on earth would have believed all of them entirely. Then, O oh Muhammad, would you compel the people in order that they become believers? So, respecting beliefs, rights, and duties of others is the cornerstone of building the state.
since it has its impact on the relation between nations and societies, for every nation has its own creed and principles, which they adhere to and view as the most sublime, which is why Islam forbade us from criticizing the followers of other beliefs in any way that might hurt them based on the fact that that religious religions came to achieve happiness for all mankind. Allah Most High says, <coughs> and do not insult those who those they invoke other than Allah, lest they insult Allah in enmity without knowledge. Thus, we have made pleasing to every com community their deeds, then to their Lord is their return, and he will inform them about what they used to do. In the same way, Islam implants the principle of, right of righteousness and good neighboring with non-Muslims, a fact which is stressed by the Sharia, texts that showcase how Islam should be practically, practically applied in the Muslim society. Allah Most High says, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion, and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Islam orders its followers to kindly deal with non-Muslims and to care about their feelings even in debates and conversations. It further urges Muslims to argue with them in the best way and do not argue with the people of the scripture except in a way that's best, except for those who commit injustice among them and say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you. And our God and your God is one, and we are Muslims in submission to him. As such, the Medina Charter shall be a model example to be followed in preserving the human dignity that in turn attempts to achieve the national cohesion with the aim of building the state and civilizations. With that said, I ask Allah Most High for forgiveness for me and for you. Muslim brothers, one's home has a lofty status in the soul, as loving and belonging to countries are among the, the natural instincts upon which man was created. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, offered the best example ever in loving his country and belonging to it when he said, how sweet of a land you are and how dear you are to me. And if it were not that my people expelled me from you, I wouldn't have lived in other than you. Also, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated to the Medina and settled therein, he asked Allah Most High to make him love Medina more than Mecca, and to make it replete with security and stability, saying, O oh Allah, make us love Medina as much as we love Mecca, or even more. The religion-state relationship is one of integration, not disagreement and preserving countries is one of the ultimate objectives of the Sharia that should be kept. Because economy cannot be stabilized unless there is continual security. Defending, protecting and sacrificing for countries is a Sharia obligation and a national duty upon he who lives on its land and takes its heaven as a shelter. In truth, loving countries is not restricted to mere feelings and sentiments but rather shall be translated into actions and good behavior, which is useful for both the individual and the entire society. Therefore, for we shall sacrifice to make our country strong. At this point, we stress the true pat that true patriotism is not mere models or phrases. Rather, it includes belief, behavior, and giving. It is a system of life and a feeling that's aware of, that, of the challenges facing it that makes people feel pain for their country's pains and feel happy for achieving their country's objectives. And that makes us all ready to sacrifice in defense of our country and in defense of its dignity.